got ourselves a Sicilian and another 2300 player. And I'm going to go with this line. I haven't played it in a bit, but okay, he fell for it. Now, how, how does it go? Uh-huh. And he apparently knows it from the speed that he's playing. Gotta be careful when you take the rook. I'm gonna do that. Gotta pick up the pace. Close position is fine. I'm up the exchange. I'm happy to trade, boss. Uh huh. And D five Pawn takes, knight takes, knight C four, Bishop takes C four, Knight takes C four, Queen D eight. Let's just hold everything, shall we? Stuff is definitely happening in this game. Let's go crazy. Twenty three hundred. That felt good. I haven't played that line since two thousand and eighteen, but it was hazy at best. That that felt good. That was a dirty, dirty, dirty game. All right, so 
went with the closed, and the main line of the close runs d6, and they clearly know how to play these positions. And you play knight d4, and you play e6, you're holding back the knight so they can't just easily trade. And just following the, the line, it, this is pretty okay for white. White doesn't have the best pawn structure with the d3 and c3 pawns, the isolated a pawn on a2, but it scored very well for white, and the engine says that white already has a negligible edge, a couple tenths of a pawn or something. Okay. Now, this is the main line. Now, what I play is rook b8, and I got this line years ago from a video off of chess.com, um, Grandmaster Kachin, who uh, he's been an amazing coach. I believe he was Aronian's first coach, and also he's been multiple-time coach of the U.S. Uh, women's Olympic team. Um, but he shows this Rook B8 idea, which I really like, and you can get, get people pretty quick with, you, don't, you save on the D6 move and no transposition, and it, it makes them make a decision early. And you can see the stat difference already because it's tricky. There's more room to go wrong. So like after queen d2, we get b4. And much different than the other lines, you can actually play against this, this whole expansion idea. You can even go e6 and f5 in some lines. Uh, you can hit on f5 before they actually get you which is one of those interesting features about this position. And did we just transpose? I just tricked myself into a transposition. No knight d4. Let's, let's do queen b6 instead. And then I would probably go something like a5 and bishop a6, very similar to what I did a couple games ago. But let's get more to the main game analysis, which was bishop takes c5, and I was aware of this line b4, and if they play a normal move like knight e2, after queen a5, you have some potential discoveries, but you can just grab on b2, and I had a game versus an 1800 rated player, like you said, about 2018 in this position in a tournament game, which I won. Um... And I mean, the benefit of this type of position, it's not like anything groundbreaking for black, but it makes someone think. They can't just make automatic moves. And hopefully you're starting to notice that as a pattern in my repertoire that like I want people to think early. I, if I find something that's just as good as the main line um, from an engine's perspective, but it's different from the main line, it makes my opponent think I'm in my comfort zone, they aren't. It gives you a better chance, especially in blitz. Knight a4, queen a5, b3, and I like my move d6. We're following a game between a 2200 and 2400 feet a player from 2009, where we take, and I went with e5 because I couldn't remember stuff like if e5 here, what's going on? Oh, I can just take. I don't know why I was hallucinating that when I was calculating in the game. But e5 seemed like it turned out reasonably well. I'm able to set up a fortress-style position where the bishops can't be bishops. And as soon as he played f5, I didn't feel good about this move because his, his light square bishop on g2 is going to be crap the rest of the game. I can shut down the position, and now I can use the open h-file. He's trading when down material. And the knights are good, but I will not miss an opportunity to get to an optimal position. A5 is just a comfort move, so I don't have to worry about my knights being purely defensive pieces. Now we're at the area of the game where I need to start slightly improving, so first I'm just going to probe on a weakness, seeing if he'll, he'll play a move like g4, because then rook h4, he's having to play a move to defend, and I, I was seeing how I could just keep, keep the ball rolling in the event of that. But then after takes, 
it's really hard for him to get away from my knights once they post up on better squares. Rook h1. Not a move I considered because of what I ended up winning the game with. Very, very classy rook h1. I like that move. Rook h3 makes sense. And then I missed the maiden too that, that I saw later. But knight e to f5, and you just can't get away from this idea. And I missed mate in one. Apparently, I still need to do some more tactics. I was just having so much fun with bullying his pieces that I wasn't even considering the mate threat until the bishop was gone for some reason. Okay, hopefully um, you're enjoying this series so far. And this is where the games get much harder I've already been playing some 2300 rated players, but as I start playing 2400 rated players, uh, I expect to start getting clipped in games, and uh, it's going to be fun. Let's learn something.